Hello everyone. In this video, we will look into the new sculpting features that have been added in Blender 4.3. So let's start with this one. When we switch to the sculpt mode, the first thing you will notice is the new brush asset shelf that has been added in the lower side. You can drag the border of the asset shelf upwards to make it bigger. This shelf will show all your brushes that are available. You can make custom categories of different brushes as well. The side toolbar has been updated as well and shows tools for masking, face sets, trimming, painting and some other. The brush asset shelf can load custom brushes as well. By default, Blender now comes with a collection of already pre-made brushes. There is a category for mesh sculpt brushes, painting and simulation brushes. To use any brush, simply click on it and start sculpting. There are some new brushes as well. We will look into them in a moment. You can also easily change the brush thumbnail size from the corner setting. To show the names of each brush, enable the checkbox. If you don't need to show the brush shelf, you can drag it down to hide it. There is a small arrow in the right corner to bring it back. There are many shortcuts to access the brush shelf. The default shortcut is shift space to show the asset shelf in a pop-up window. One shortcut is in the view menu. You can either add it to your quick favorites or assign a custom shortcut as needed. Let's check out some of the new brushes that are available. I will go into the general tab as it will only show the sculpting related brushes. One of the new brush is the plateau brush that will create a raised flat surface. Another brush is the trim brush which is useful for removing small parts of the mesh. Another new brush which I really like is the Grab 2D brush. It moves all the points under it along any axis. Let's switch to the orthographic view to see how it works. I will enable the mirror setting as well. When we move any part of the mesh using the Grab 2D brush, you can see it moves all the area behind it as well. This allows to make shapes more easily in sculpt mode. If we compare it to the default grab brush which is already available, you can see how it only affects the part where the brush is hovering. So the new brush is a good addition. There is a new pull brush also which can be useful for pushing out small portions of the mesh. By the way, you can also click the brush preview in the side panel to open the brush asset shelf or press W to show the sculpt menu and select any brush. So plenty of options to access the brushes. There are some more brushes which you can check for yourself. I have added a link for the entire brushes in the video description below. Now we will move to the paint brush category and check the new brushes that are available here. The painting brushes allow to quickly paint over your 3D models, especially sculpts. This method is also known as vertex painting and is based on colors, not textures. Keep in mind if your model is low resolution, then the painting results will be also low resolution. So it works best with high resolution models. I will select one of the painting brush, change the color and start painting. You do not need any UVs for this. All colors are on one layer. There are different types of soft, hard, smear, blend brushes. Give them a try to see how they paint and affect the colors. If we exit the sculpt mode and switch to the material preview, you may not see the colors that you have painted. 
For that, in the shader editor, add a color attribute node and set the color property in it and connect it to the base color of the principal BSDF node. This will make the colors you painted visible in the viewport and in the rendering. Now coming back to the sculpt mode, we will check the cloth simulation brushes. They are useful for generating cloth folds and similar cloth related sculpted shapes. Although it can take some practice to properly understand how they work. Let's try the expand brush. By dragging over the mesh, you can quickly create folds. There is a grab plane brush as well, which can also create similar results. The stretch brush can push points around the mesh. Try playing with all the brushes to see how they affect the mesh. Alongside, switch to the other sculpting brushes to refine and smooth the shapes. Another useful feature of the brush asset shelf is that we can also create our custom sculpting brushes which can save different settings in them and we can easily reuse the brushes for any sculpting. They will get loaded in every Blender file. I will select the default clay thumb brush for now. You can select any other brush. Right click the brush and create a duplicate asset copy of it. Give it a different name. You have two clay thumb brushes now. In the new one, change some settings for it from the side property panel. I will change the stroke method to line, increase the hardness. If I use it, you can see the result it produces. Let's assume we like it and want to save these settings. Go to the brush property. It will be showing unsaved changes. Click the small arrow and from the menu, select save changes to asset. Or you can right click on the brush in the asset shelf to save as well. We can also assign a custom thumbnail preview image for the brush. It is useful for easily identifying our own brushes or maybe we can share them with other people. One issue that is still present at this time is that the brush asset shelf refreshes on every undo and sometimes it gets stuck loading the brush thumbnails as you can see here. This can be a bit distracting. Exiting the sculpt mode or clicking any other brush usually fixes it. Brush refresh flickering on undo still remains. Hopefully this issue will be resolved in the future updates. Let's move to some other improvements that have been added. The lasso tool now supports stabilized stroke setting which allows to make slow smooth selections for trimming and masking operations. The polyline trim tool operation can be now completed by double clicking at any position in the viewport rather than going back to the starting point. Since we looked at different simulation brushes, I want to show the cloth filter as well. Although this tool is not new and have already existed in previous versions of Blender. First, I will use the fill mask operation to have the mesh completely covered in mask. Then use the box mask while holding control to unhide the area that needs to have cloth simulation applied to. Click the cloth filter. Try some different settings like gravity on inflate. Drag in the viewport to create cloth folds and use any sculpting brush to shift smooth the results. There are many interesting possibilities using this tool as well. And this covers most of the main sculpting updates added in new Blender 4.3. I hope you find this video useful. If you like to see more in the future, then please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.